Good morning uh, for this uh, Delphi XC3 uh, overview. Uh, my name is uh, Paweł Głowacki. Uh, I'm Embarcadero Technical Lead uh, for Delphi and for RAD Studio for Europe. And it's my very big pleasure to be here in uh, Verona, actually for the fourth time. So uh, I have not missed any single uh, conference so far. So it's really great to be among such a big uh, number of experts and great uh, Delphi fans here again. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to uh, give the overview today uh, of uh, Delphi XE3, which is the, the latest version of uh, XE3. Uh, there is uh, plenty of uh, new things there, and normally I would speak uh, about the XE3 for like half a day, and I need to condense it for like only for uh, 60 minutes, so it's going to be a quite uh, challenging task because it's quite a lot of new stuff. So first of all, we have uh, the second version of FireMonkey, uh, FireMonkey FM2, that got uh, all the things that were missing from the initial uh, release, like actions, like actions, uh, like anchors, like um, multimedia capabilities, they are there. So it's really, um, FireMonkey is ready for business. In fact, uh, yesterday I was uh, hosting a, a webinar, and it was played in uh, three different uh, time zones. FireMonkey FM Square, ready for multi-platform business. When I was actually demonstrating uh, that you can actually use this technology today uh, to create uh, applications that are natively compiled from the same source code, from the same code base to multiple platforms. Uh, so currently in XE3, uh, what we have is uh, support for uh, leading uh, desktop operating system. So uh, XE3 uh, supports uh, Windows 8. So what I have here is uh, actually the latest version of Mac OS uh, being Mountain Lion uh, as a host system. And I have uh, Windows 8 uh, in my virtual machine. Uh, so what XE3 uh, supports uh, is the latest in the desktop operating systems. And we are also very uh, close to releasing the uh, um, version that supports mobile uh, platforms. So basically, you only need to know one thing. You only need to do Delphi or C++ uh, and you can uh, compile from the same code base to all the major operating systems. So we are very close to um, something that was used to be called a mobile studio, but is still in beta. Uh, but this uh, capability to create native application for iPhone, uh, for uh, iOS or Android is, is quite close. Uh, so this is actually an exciting uh, time for us uh, here, here um, <laughs> Delphi experts and um, Embarcadero, uh, that we have a technology that is quite unique on the market. So let me actually... Um, I have a few slides, but I probably I don't have enough time to actually go through the, all the slides, so I would probably like to uh, do some uh, live demos. But the, the, the thing is that, uh, yeah, that our uh, development uh, world is not about Microsoft and not about Windows anymore. In fact, recently, uh, Google has actually, um, is now bigger in terms of the market capitalization than Microsoft. And uh, Microsoft is actually, in effect, uh, in a sense, going away and people are less and less talking about .NET. Uh, it's more about native development and even Microsoft uh, have to admit it. So it's very, when we released uh, Delphi 1, like something like uh, almost 18 years ago, like there will be a 17 and a half year ago, that, that the world was very much uh, Microsoft and Windows centric. To create Windows 3.1 uh, application was the big deal and with no coding. But nowadays it's more, more about other platforms as well. So with uh, XE3, with Delphi XE3, you only need to know one thing. You, you code, uh, you can reuse your existing source code, you can reuse your existing data modules and you can be productive uh, right away and create native compiled applications that are very close to the metal and they are running with maximum performance on all the platforms. So basically it's um, also it's about the new hardware. So first of all is the number of different operating systems that to support but also nowadays it's all about tablets. So just uh, I think last week there was um, uh, Microsoft releasing the very new uh, Surface 
and uh, Samsung Slate was uh, is actually on the market for quite some time. And if you think about it, it's it's something in between the traditional Windows desktop machine and a, and a tablet machine with a different uh, operating system. With with Delphi XC3, uh, we have support for all the latest hardware. So also you have a, a new components for uh, talking to sensors. Um, during the XC3 um, launch, I was uh, presenting for two times with uh, David I that was over uh, in uh, Amsterdam and Warsaw, and he had this uh, new generation Samsung Slate, uh, which is kind of a tablet, but still with a regular Windows uh, and also with, with, with Delphi. So I have some demonstrations of using sensors, but if I just try to shake my Mac machine, it, it does not have any sensors. But the support for the, the new generation hardware is there built in, in the Delphi XC3, which is great. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time showing slides. I can do it very quickly. I think this is the, the best one. So, virtually replicate yourself. So you only need to know one thing. So this one guy is actually creating Windows applications. The other guy that is on the phone is creating Mac application. The other guy is actually creating iOS application and these two guys are creating Android applications. And they only need to know one thing, just one programming language, one library, one framework. Okay, let me actually jump into the, some of the uh, things that are there in, uh, in XC3. So my setup is uh, I'm, <coughs> I'm running uh, macOS uh, Mountain Lion, which is the latest uh, version uh, of uh, macOS, and uh, inside of the my VMware Fusion 5, which is also the latest one, I have Windows 8. So uh, both Delphi uh, the application that the, uh, Delphi creates and, and the, the environment are working with all the latest versions of the uh, Mac operating system. So um, this is a, this is one of the my favorite uh, demo programs that comes uh, with Delphi with a Delphi XC3 installation. It's called Controls Demo, and it shows uh, quite a lot of uh, different uh, uh, options and different things that. Uh, um, Delphi XC3 supports. So both the uh, traditional uh, two-dimensional um, user interfaces but also three-dimensional user interfaces and uh, vector-based graphics. Actually one of the new things that is there in, uh, in XC3 uh, is a possibility to uh, create applications uh, that can be directly uploaded to the Mac App Store. So the same functionality uh, we are going to have for for mobile um, for mobile uh, applications uh, that is coming. So basically, uh, you can either create uh, applications just uh, normally for debugging, but you can also, if you have a Mac account uh, or Apple Store account, you can uh, create applications and directly upload it to the uh, App Store to, uh, st straight away uh, f from the uh, from your uh, uh, ID. So uh, yeah, let's, let's give it a try. So uh, I can c compile my application for both 64-bit uh, and 32-bit on Windows, and I can compile it uh, for for macOS as well. Uh, so basically, this is a. At that moment, I'm compiling it with a 64-bit compiler, uh, so I can create an application uh, that will. Uh, yeah, would be a 64-bit uh, executable, and uh, it demonstrates quite a lot of uh, different uh, uh, aspects of uh, FireMonkey and XE3. So this is all uh, based on a vector-based uh, graphics. Uh, you can uh, rotate everything. You can uh, control opacity. That's the button that I like the most. Is actually doing the, this thing. So you can actually do it in a in a 3D as well. Uh, so th these are the, some of the uh, key things that are, uh, in, it's not new uh, for FireMonkey FM2, but now it actually got quite a lot of uh, polish, uh, so you could actually now uh, use the full uh, new features. One of the 
some of the new things uh, in FireMonkey 2 and Delphi XE 3 uh, is support for the new uh, Windows 8 look. So uh, you can see uh, we have a, a, a number of um, special uh, Metropolis uh, UI um, uh, styles. Uh, so with, with FireMonkey uh, you can uh, create applications that are based on uh, different styles. Uh, so uh, also uh, convert uh, existing uh, existing uh, forms, uh, VCL forms and FireMonkey forms uh, to the new Metropolis uh, look and feel. Um, let me actually jump very quickly to the slide with uh, with a new uh, Metropolis things. Uh, so uh, that's one of the key features uh, in uh, Delphi XE three support uh, for Windows eight. Uh, so the nice thing about it is that it does not require Windows eight. Uh, you can create uh, applications that have a look and feel uh, of uh, Windows eight and can run on any version that uh, Delphi supports, which is uh, Windows 8, Windows 7, Windows Vista, back to XP. Uh, so what you can do, you can uh, create new applications based on the, this new uh, Windows 8 uh, style, and you can also convert existing applications um, to Windows 8. So let me actually very quickly uh, demonstrate this. So uh, let me close this uh, project and uh, create a brand new project which is based on the uh, Metropolis uh, UI so uh, takes a little bit of time but it's coming so uh, when you create a new uh, project in Delphi you have a um, you have to choose whether you want to create a VCL or FireMonkey application, but for both FireMonkey and VCL, you have a possibility to create uh, this new Metropolis UI application. So this is uh, actually based. There are three uh, different templates uh, that are coming with with Delphi. Uh, so you can have uh, the blank application. So it's actually let's let's have a look how it uh, works. It's actually quite funny because when you run it, the first time I ran it, I was like, oh my god, my computer is not working anymore. Huh. <laughs> That's a, hmm, what's that? That's actually a blank Metropolis UI application uh, that you are supposed to uh, control with a touch. Or the best thing is that you have an escape button. If you press on escape, you have a possibility to close it. So don't... Don't don't be scared. Luckily, uh, you can create it. So the w one of the things that uh, you can also uh, take existing forms uh, and convert them to a Metropolis UI, and then in this case, uh, you make sure that you have a, a possibility to close the application. Because if you don't have an exit uh, possibility to exit uh, the application, then you will, the only way to stop it is through the task manager and uh, control alt delete so uh, yeah there are other templates uh, that are actually a little bit more uh, useful uh, well, let me jump directly to a not completely empty but fire monkey metropolis ui grid metropolis ui application uh, so this basically uh, gives me a starting point uh, for creating applications with uh, um, again it's fully maximized so one of the things and th th these uh, templates are actually uh, optimized for um, Windows 8 also running on uh, on tablet computer so it's a typical thing uh, that you have a maximized uh, screen you don't get uh, minimize and maximize buttons and you can actually uh, start from here uh, creating uh, different things and also um, you can when you, you when you create an application uh, with a Metropolis UI you get this stylebook component and the stylebook component can be used to actually uh, load uh, some other um, styles so by default you get this uh, Metropolis uh, dark style uh, but you can also use other, uh, other styles so I have here uh, RAD Studio samples actually documents RAD Studio 10.0 styles and I can also uh, um, load other styles so it does not have to be so uh, 
so dark, I can actually go ahead and create my application using an other style. So there are three different styles that you can create and you can use uh, to uh, create applications with Metropolis uh, UN, UI. There are also um, new components and in fact when you go into the uh, source code uh, of the generated uh, um, of the generated application actually I could maybe in make the the font a little bit bigger so you can see better um, display and make it maybe 16 or something uh, so uh, you can see that this uh, source code that is generated by the wizard uh, is already um, enabled for for gestures uh, so uh, you have this form gesture uh, event already uh, implemented okay I don't want to go online, and uh, so that, that that's a, that's your starting point for creating a, a Windows uh, 8 application using a Metropolis uh, UI. So that's uh, that, that's probably uh, one thing is to be able to uh, to create uh, applications that are. Uh, that are enabled for uh, Windows 8. Uh, there are also other features in, uh, um, in uh, um, FireMonkey 2. So one of my favorite uh, features uh, is the new actions. So let me actually create a, an empty uh, HD uh, FireMonkey application uh, and put some, some actions. So I'm going to actually go ahead and uh, add a T action list component that's actually new uh, for Delphi XE3 uh, it was not there in the initial uh, release of FireMonkey and with uh, with action lists uh, you can add uh, different actions and uh, there are also some um, new actions that are actually very non-standard like value range action that's actually a very interesting uh, type of a uh, new uh, action that you can uh, use uh, inside of uh, FireMonkey FM2. Uh, so this uh, value range action uh, can be used to connect uh, to uh, things like uh, trackbars, arc dials. So let me actually uh, show you how you work with it. Uh, so value range action, you can actually go ahead and specify the minimum value of whatever, 0 to 100. You can specify the frequency, maybe let it make it 2. And I can now connect this action uh, to something like a trackbar. So I have a trackbar, um, T trackbar. Bar. Okay, so uh, also new feature in uh, FM2 is uh, support for anchors, uh, so you can actually uh, go ahead and uh, make it anchor to the right. So when I resize the my user my form, it goes with it, and I can connect to this track bar uh, this new uh, value range action. And uh, also, what I can do uh, is to use the new uh, visual live bindings. Uh, so that's something that was uh, introduced uh, in Delphi XC3 as well. Uh, possibility to, um, in a visual way, to use uh, live bindings uh, that it was quite difficult to use uh, in uh, XE2, uh, but in a more visual way. So. In this uh, example, what I want to do is to display uh, the position of my uh, track bar in a label. So I can use uh, visual live bindings uh, to do it easy. I just need to add a T uh, label component to the form and uh, just right click on the form and say, OK, I want to bind visually. Uh, I get a the new <coughs> visual live bindings uh, designer, I can connect uh, things visually. For example, I can just make a connection between a value and a text. Uh, it's actually saying me that that's uh, <coughs> not going to work, but I know that it's going to work. So in this way, uh, I can uh, visually <coughs> show the, the value of a trackbar uh, on the label. Let me actually run this application so we can see uh, some of the uh, functionality. So uh, notice that I have uh, specified the frequency of 2. Uh, so I 
connected to this value range action uh, to the track bar uh, so uh, I can only go every 2, 32, 36, 38 and uh, the value uh, that is um, changed in a in a track bar is automatically displayed actually you, you don't see it because it's a, such a small label let me actually maybe make it a little bit bigger so it's more visible make it 18 oh that's going to be much more visible so now uh, you can see better that now I can create this application that actually uh, use uh, visual live bindings for connecting the track bar to the label and at the same time I'm using the new uh, range action uh, for controlling the connected action. Actually I could add more components so for example I could add things like T arc dial and this is actually maybe make it bigger and I can also display uh, the value there and also what I can do I can connect it to the same action uh, so this is really uh, what makes sense here is that you can actually define things like those uh, new range actions uh, that are actually connected to multiple components you can see actually that I can manipulate either the the arc, uh, the arc dial uh, or the track bar and it's all synchronized so also uh, the fact that I'm connected with uh, visual life bindings to the label uh, makes it easy to create a, a responsible uh, user interface. So that's, that's uh, some of the um, new things uh, around basic uh, functionality uh, in, um, in Delphi XE3 and FireMonkey. Uh, also what is uh, quite new uh, is a possibility to um, there is a, the, the, da the data explorer uh, has been completely uh, redesigned. Let me actually show you how you create a database applications today with, uh, uh, with, with Delphi XE3. Uh, so the, the data explorer used to be uh, implemented in a .NET code. And what is new here is the possibility also to, to create uh, FireMonkey applications, uh, database applications very easily. So uh, let me actually very quickly show you uh, how you can create a, a database application with FireMonkey uh, using uh, new uh, visual live bindings and use, uh, using the new um, live bindings wizard. So uh, I have this employee database actually that's something that is uh, coming configured so when you uh, install RAD Studio it will also silently install interbase for you and also you will get this employee uh, node uh, pre-configured uh, so you can actually open it and see what are the different uh, uh, tables uh, in a underlying database so I'm using interbase but you could also use uh, other databases in the exactly the same way so let uh, let us create an application that talks to this uh, customer uh, customer data so this is actually a view into the actual uh, database table that is connected uh, through data explorer so i'm going to create very quickly an application uh, with firemonkey 2 and visual life bindings that will make it easy to work uh, with this with this data okay so uh the first, uh, the first thing you want to do is to actually uh, add a SQL connection component to the form. So I could have do it uh, uh, manually, but the easiest way is actually to take this connection and drag it uh, onto the form. And in this moment, I have a T-SQL connection component uh, already pre-configured to point to my uh, interbase uh, database. And um, yeah, the next thing is just to use the wizard. So uh, wizard is not uh, enabled uh, out of the box. So when you create, uh, when you install Delphi XC3, uh, you you, you might want to actually go to the new uh, live bindings uh, option here and make sure that this uh, display live bindings wizard uh, option is uh, checked when you install it uh, from the box it is unchecked so you don't get this live bindings wizard uh, in the right click menu but i want to make it checked and now uh, I, ca I can actually 
just select this live bindings wizard. Another possibility to invoke this uh, live binding wizard is uh, through the, uh, in, if you are in the designer, there is a, this top down option with uh, like a magic wand. It's also bringing the, the wizard. So I can actually uh, maybe do it in a, in a right context menu. So basically everything will be done uh, automatically for me. Uh, I can go ahead and select, I want to have a grid and a data source because that's what I want to do for uh, this database application. Uh, click on next, uh, the wizard will ask me, okay, what kind of grid do you want? The new uh, T grid or string grid? So it is also working for, for the VCL in the same way, but in the case of the VCL, I will not have the possibility to select a grid. Uh, in fact, in Delphi XC3, uh, the grid component has been completely redesigned. Uh, it has some problems in XC2, and now it's actually much more um, capable. It can display um, things like uh, Boolean values, like multi-select values, like bitmaps, so it's very flexible uh, component. So I want the wizard to add a brand new uh, T-grid to the form, and also the wizard asked me, okay, you want to have a new source. Uh, what kind of source do you want? So um, there are two possibilities. I can go for the tbind source uh, DBX, which is a brand new component. Um, and also I can uh, use a prototype bind source. So this is also something that is uh, new uh, to Delphi XC3. Uh, is a possibility to uh, quickly prototype uh, user interfaces. So uh, this prototype bind source that I'm not going to select in this wizard, but it will let you uh, generate some random data. So when you design a user interface, uh, you don't work f with an empty <laughs> user interface. You get some, uh, some uh, random data generated automatically for you, which is uh, also another cool new thing in Delphi XC3. But uh, for this demo, I want to go for a tbind source uh, DBX. Uh, click on next, and here I can actually specify uh, to which uh, database table I want to talk. So let it be customer ta table. I can click on test command to see if it's uh, successful. And on the uh, last uh, screen uh, of the wizard, I can also optionally add a data source uh, navigator. Okay. So with this, you see uh, at the bottom uh, that there were some uh, components added to the uh, to the form, and uh, this really represents uh, the way we did uh, database applications in Delphi. One was so radically simple; you just add a DB grid data source T table and was there. And with this new visual live bindings, it's if you think about it, it's quite uh, similar. I have a grid, uh, I have a navigator added for me. I can actually make it uh, aligned to the top. Uh, I have also the grid uh, that I can align to the client. Okay, click on client. Uh, so uh, this basically that's it. You don't need to do anything more. Uh, you can just run this application, maybe save it. Good naming conventions, Project 83 and Unit 80 is a good naming, so I will remember what it is. Uh, and basically, uh, you have a fully functional uh, application at this stage. Uh, to work uh, with, a, with a database. And this is actually, uh, when you start wa working with uh, visual live bindings, uh, you will get a, a, a binding list uh, component added to the form automatically. And there is also this new uh, bind source uh, DBX component. Uh, this is actually a very powerful component because I didn't have to do much. Normally, in a, when you create a DBX Express application, what you would do is to create a SQL connection component, uh, then I have a unidirectional um, SQL uh, query or a table component, data set provider, and client data set. And this uh, bind source DBX uh, uh, component actually already aggregates uh, all those components. If you look at the 
uh, object inspector here, uh, you see that we have a um, client data set, I have a data source, I have a provider, I have a SQL data set, and you can also, basically, if you want, you can directly uh, work uh, with these components because they are exposed, so you don't have to, they are not hidden from you. And at the same time, uh, in a typical uh, DB Express application, the one line of code that you would typically write would be client data set uh, apply updates to make sure that the, the changes that you have locally in a client data set are applied to an underlying database. Actually, this component has a property auto apply, which is by default to true, so you don't have to write any line of code and you have a, a fully functional a database application uh, very easily. So I can run this application and uh, yeah I can change things like let's change some values Verona is super just click on uh, uh, apply and this change will be automatically applied to the underlying database so I can go ahead and uh, actually verify and uh, right click here and go into the view and uh, okay it should be there, but it's not. Let me see. Um, refresh, maybe. Okay, that's uh, that's strange. Um, okay, let me run this one more time because maybe I have not done something correctly. Uh, let's change something. Verona, okay. Verona is super. So this is, I have rerun this application, so I see that this change is there. It's probably more about the, uh, the data explorer that was not uh, updated. Let me close this guy and go ahead, go to the customer and go to the view and I see that Verona is super. So basically, uh, that's the, if you think about it, the, the new visual live bindings uh, is a very powerful uh, new mechanism of both creating uh, new user interfaces, uh, but also creating uh, uh, database applications in a similar way like we used to in a back in a Delphi one days when you just it was just a matter of adding a DB grid, adding a data source and T table and off you go. But then with a DB Express we have a more powerful uh, uh, database access. Uh, but now with uh, Visual Live Bindings and the with Visual Live Bindings Wizard, uh, you can create uh, applications uh, even easier. Another new thing uh, in, uh, in 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 uh, Delphi XE3 uh, and in FireMonkey uh, is support for a multimedia. Uh, so now uh, you can create uh, applications that are rendering uh, um, audio files, video files you can also uh, do a video and audio capture so you can programmatically create mp3 files or a video files so I have a actually pre-built demo that demonstrate uh, just this uh, so video player uh, so this is uh, actually a demo uh, that demonstrate this new uh, multimedia capabilities of uh, Delphi XC3 uh, there are two uh, components that are relevant here. Uh, so we have, uh, first of all, a media player component. So this component is a, uh, a non-visual component. Uh, it um, basically it has methods like play, stop, uh, basically just to, uh, to, to, to be able to, to play back uh, both uh, video and uh, audio files. And there is also an um, associated uh, media player uh, control uh, component that uh, you need to to connect to the media player. So basically, uh, you can have just uh, one non-visual media player component and you can have, in general, a multiple multi media player control components. So, but it's not very useful. Probably you would just want to have uh, one media player component. And here uh, in the source code, you can see, basically, when you want to uh, create a play some uh, media file you just call play method or stop. There is also a current time uh, so you can use it to either programmatically go to a certain method, uh, certain place in your uh, multimedia file or maybe you want to display the progress in a trackbar uh, using this uh, current time. But in a, in a video player uh, you can go directly to the uh, this new uh, FMX media 
and if you find this declaration you can see there are uh, different uh, devices defined there, like the capture device, which is actually an abstract class, and you can use uh, the video capture device class, uh, or you can use also the um, audio uh, capture device class. And uh, also what is interesting uh, about the uh, FireMonkey and, uh, and the Delphi XE3 is you can see quite a lot uh, these new uh, scoped enums uh, compiler di directive. So, for example, this is just an ordinary uh, enumerated type, like T media state. But normally in Delphi, you don't have to use a fully qualified uh, name of, of, of a enumerated type, like T media state dot, dot stop. Normally, uh, for example, let's have a look, like we have a form, and this is a typical enumerated type, like a line. You can see that traditionally uh, we have been uh, embedding this uh, information about the uh, enumerated type as a part of the identifier. So we have AL client, AL top, AL bottom, but in many situations it's not very readable. So you can see quite a lot uh, now in, uh, in Delphi XE3 uh, that we have this fully qualified name. So if I just actually deleted this and try to compile, it will not compile, it will tell me, okay, what is this stopped? So there is this new D media state. Actually, it's not new, but what is new is that it's used quite a lot uh, nowadays uh, inside of the source code, this scoped enums on. So this is a compiler direct directive that you can see quite a lot uh, in, uh, in sources that basically um, enforces that you have to use a fully qualified name. So you, 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 instead of having a media type, you could have an empty audio or empty video, but now when you, you want to use this, it, if it's audio or video, you have to use a fully qualified name. So you have a media type dot audio, t media type dot video. Actually, this is also the same thing is also visible in the new uh, sensors framework. So I'm going to show you other a new feature which is new to uh, FireMonkey, uh, which is uh, FireMonkey 2, uh, support for uh, sensors. So it's not going to work <laughs> because I don't have uh, any sensors in my Mac, so if I just shake it, it's not going to do, to do, but at least I can uh, demonstrate it to you. Uh, in fact, when I was uh, presenting with, uh, with, with David I, he had this new Samsung Slay device, and he had a Windows 8, and Rad Studio XE3 installed, and there was this uh, sensor, so you could actually create applications today uh, that are taking advantage of the latest uh, uh, hardware. So there are those new uh, two components that you can uh, see uh, in a sensors palette. There is one called location sensor and one uh, called team motion sensor. Uh, so these components actually, if you have a hardware that is capable of uh, having sensors, you can today with Delphi XE3 create applications that are actually using uh, the latest uh, generation of hardware. So how does it work? So uh, basi basically you just need to place a, a sensor component on the form and it has a, you want to make it active so it actually is working. Uh, there is also this uh, old style enumerated value LCT location change can be large or small. So basically this is how you uh, if you want to to detect uh, small changes in location or maybe uh, not so frequently but uh, so you can basically change the uh, sensitivity of your of your sensor and uh, when the change uh, is detected uh, you will get an on location changed uh, event and in this event uh, you get uh, as a parameter to this event the uh, old location and the new location, uh, which is actually uh, of a type T location uh, coordinates 2D. So basically, you can, the moment that, that, that your sensor detects that, uh, that the location of your computer has changed, uh, this event will be triggered, and you, as a programmer, uh, you can actually go and programmatically uh, inspect the, the values, the, like uh, latitude and longitude, just 
these are just float values that tell you where, where you are. Actually, this is again, uh, you can see it's quite a new thing. You have this again, this scoped enums. Uh, there is a system.sensors unit uh, where you can actually um, work with sensors. Some of the sensors are quite uh, yeah, esoteric, like uh, electrical sensor or orientation sensor or a light sensor or a scanner sensor. But this is basically, uh, you can see quite um, um, frequently within the FireMonkey uh, source code that we are really preparing for the, the full support for both desktop and, and mobile devices. So basically the, the source code, uh, we are just uh, basically launching uh, uh, the, 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 the beta uh, program for the new uh, mobile studio. Uh, so that um, the, 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 the version of Delphi that will have this uh, new uh, generation uh, compiler to create uh, native applications for iOS and for, uh, for Google. But the source code is there. So there was quite a lot of uh, work already done for the exe free release uh, to actually have all the types in place and it's just a matter now for us to deliver the new generation compiler and the whole the tool chain around it but you can uh, use those things uh, today okay so uh, another things for the uh, for uh, rad studio uh, is support for a uh, new uh, bitmap styles. In, uh, in XE2, uh, when uh, FireMonkey uh, was uh, introduced, uh, we only had um, um, support for vector-based styles. Uh, now with uh, XE3, uh, we have also bitmap-based styles. Uh, so basically this um, allow us to uh, create um, user interface controls that are identical to the native controls. So if you think about the FireMonkey uh, architecture that we can um, compile from the same code base to mul multiple different uh, operating systems, uh, we don't uh, rely on the operating system to provide us with a different controls. Like in a VCL, when you have a T button, it's really a Windows T button, but with a wrapper around it to make it easier to work, but it has a handle. You can send in some API calls that are not standard in a VCL. In FireMonkey, uh, every rendering, every controls are completely done within the FireMonkey. So we do not depend on the underlying operating system. So we can create, it's very much like a game if you like, because uh, FireMonkey itself is using the same uh, rendering technologies that the game developers are using. So on the Windows, we are using um, um, Direct X for rendering when you are running the same application on Mac we are using uh, OpenGL. Uh, the same application uh, run on a mobile device will use OpenGL ES. But this is hidden from a developer. But at the same time, uh, you want your application to look exactly like a native application. That was actually especially important on the mobile platforms. So in uh, XE2, when we had this support with uh, Free Pascal, those I, iOS application didn't look like a real iOS application. It was not the, the typical controls, like uh, different styles. Now, uh, with uh, XE3, uh, we have uh, introduced to FireMonkey uh, the bitmap based styles. So uh, you can have a pixel perfect um, representation of a native controls, but done within the FireMonkey. So this is also very important for the Mac, uh, because with Mac, uh, you have now new generation. Uh, retina displays uh, that are like four times more uh, higher resolution so for every pixel there is now four pixels and this also makes a challenge for for developers to actually create applications that will look uh, great on the, those new generation displays so that's actually something new for uh, FireMonkey uh, 2 in XE3 is that we actually when you compile to Mac uh, we bundle two types of the uh, styles, one traditional style and one high resolution style. So the FireMonkey when it's run on, uh, on, on Mac, it will first detect what kind of display we are working with and uh, load appropriate style. So from the programmer it's great because you don't have to worry about it and your um, FireMonkey application will look great on a old style uh, hardware all on, all on, on all of the newest uh, retina displays. So there is also um, in FireMonkey um, 
Also in the, in, the, in the Mac, I think it's a possibility to uh, upload uh, directly from uh, within the ID to the uh, Mac App Store. So this is actually an example of an uh, existing application that was uh, created by Anders Olson uh, from US, uh, from Scotts Valley. And application that is uh, created with FireMonkey and uploaded to an uh, App Store and you can actually uh, download it uh, today. So, uh, yeah, let me actually maybe show you uh, this support for uh, new styles. So, uh, we have this new uh, tool uh, for um, building styles. It's called Bitmap Style Designer. Uh, so, this is actually quite new uh, for uh, FireMonkey 2. Uh, in XE2, this tool was only uh, used for uh, working with VCL styles. Uh, in XE3, uh, now we can work with both um, VCL styles and uh, FireMonkey styles. And also, it has support for this uh, new bitmap uh, based uh, styles so you can basically uh, preview uh, the style that you are working with either the VCL or FireMonkey so maybe I can just want to have a FireMonkey and I can run uh, like a test uh, application that has all kinds of uh, controls uh, so I can see uh, if my style is okay. So this this tool is actually a separate executable. Uh, it's uh, freely redistributable. Uh, so typically developers are not so good in uh, colors and uh, graphics. So we know how to write code, but when it comes to comparing red, green, and blue, we are very bad. So typically, you won't, would like to have a graphical designer that has some maybe more skills, and you can give this tool, uh, this, uh, this uh, style designer, uh, so uh, he or she can actually uh, design uh, a style for you. So this basically, uh, you can use this to modify uh, the styles that comes uh, with FireMonkey, with Delphi, or you can create a brand new style. You can uh, uh, open uh, any of the styles that are uh, coming with, with um, Rad Studio. So you see there are now support for VCL styles and FMX uh, styles as well. So this is a great tool that you can uh, use. Actually, styles are quite powerful, so you can actually use these to uh, do different things. Actually, I was playing uh, recently with a, with a project uh, which is a FireMonkey uh, Fire chemical viewer application. So uh, here you can see uh, that the user interface that I'm working on right now, it's, it's using a, one of those uh, custom styles. So this is actually a, a style that you can uh, load uh, and uh, actually this is in uh, documents, Rad Studio. 10.0 styles. So there are some metropolis styles, but the one that I'm using here is a transparent style. So it's really making a, a, a difference uh, that uh, your user interface does not look does not have to be looking boring. You just basically take one of the existing uh, styles, and you can have those semi-transparent uh, buttons and uh, things of this kind. Actually, let me actually show you how this works. So I hope it works. It's a, it, it's the one that I'm actually working on right now. I have quite a lot of uh, molecules here, uh, sample data. I think I'm going to display the most important molecule for any program, which is a caffeine. So this is actually now a FireMonkey application uh, demonstrating the structure of a, a caffeine a molecule. Uh, you can use it in a, in a 3D. Actually, that's something I want to save for my session uh, in the afternoon, when I'm going to discuss the uh, FireMonkey 3D programming. Uh, but uh, in, in, in FireMonkey, uh, we have uh, also quite a lot of new uh, features uh, in terms of uh, 3D programming. Uh, there is a new uh, material system, so uh, there are some new components uh, that you can use like uh, in the materials for um, um, assigning uh, um, materials to different uh, 3D uh, components. Uh, so it's uh, very much optimized for the graphic uh, chips. So uh, those uh, new material 
um, components for 3D applications are uh, based on uh, shaders, so the programs that are being executed within the uh, graphical processor unit. And it, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun, but I'm going to save this one uh, for later for the session in the afternoon if you decide to go for a, my session because there's going to be a big competition free simultaneous tracks so I need to attract some more some more um, people to my session okay so uh, just uh, just summarizing uh, the new features uh, in uh, in um, in Delphi and XE3 uh, so uh, we have support for the latest uh, desktop operating systems, uh, support for Windows 8, uh, support for uh, Mac OS 10 and Mountain Lion. So the Delphi itself still needs uh, Windows to run, uh, but you can create uh, applications uh, that are cap um, uh, that are uh, compatible with the latest uh, in uh, desktop operating systems and we are very close to releasing the, the mobile version. So everything that you do today uh, with Delphi uh, and FireMonkey will be applicable uh, to uh, the upcoming uh, mobile compilers uh, so you can create uh, other things. Also, this is not really a part of Delphi but one of the really cool features is uh, the new HTML5 builder but, but the HTML5 builder part of RAD Studio uh, is something very intriguing so uh, it, it has been used to be called RAD PHP and in the past it was used to be called Delphi for PHP uh, but it's now more about uh, um, HTML5, HTML5 uh, CSS3 being able to uh, convert your uh, applications which are JavaScript based applications to a native uh, mobile applications using an uh, embedded uh, phone gap wizard uh, so this that's really uh, powerful so also the, the new visual live bindings it's actually quite of the uh, you could you could think that Delphi was released something like almost 18 years ago 17 and uh, and something we are going to have a adult and Delphi is going to be adult next uh, Valentine's Day uh, and you can think that there is no new um, improvements in the way how we create uh, visual applications but really visual live bindings that I have demonstrated is the, actually the new way of creating a new uh, in interesting visual uh, applications and also talking to a uh, databases. Um, also then the, the support for Metropolis UI uh, so you can create uh, applications that have this uh, Windows 8 uh, look and feel and the benefit is that you don't have to uh, use uh, Windows 8 you can use any version of Windows and uh, back to the Windows XP and you can have applications today that have this new uh, Windows 8 look and feel and also I have been sp uh, talking about the improvements in the FireMonkey itself so the FireMonkey itself um, is now FireMonkey Square, FM Square, uh, got um, a number of things that were missing from the initial uh, release like um, actions, like answers, uh, those uh, new generation of actions that I have demonstrated, these value range actions are great for demoing, uh, and also uh, support for multimedia, so you can uh, play back uh, audio files, video files, you can capture uh, video and media files um, programmatically. Also the, 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 the new uh, sensors framework, uh, something that I have Oh, maybe I should shake my mouth. No, it's not going to work. But uh, the, the sensors framework is there, so uh, there is quite a lot of work that has been done um, in inside of the um, Delphi XE3 uh, to prepare the FireMonkey framework for the uh, upcoming uh, mobile capabilities. Okay, I see that that's, uh, time is almost uh, gone. Uh, there are some... Um, uh, projects that we are working right now so we are here on a Delphi conference so maybe C++ is not uh, uh, something to talk about uh, but uh, we are basically um, quite close to releasing a brand new new generation uh, C++ 64 bit compiler uh, that is based on a new uh, compiler technology based on LLVM uh, which is something that is um, Apple is using in very compilers and it's also uh, 
give us the, the, the highest uh, compatibi compatibility with uh, uh, standards like C++ uh, 11, uh, 11 specification. Uh, so um, that's also the, the first uh, step towards our new new generation mobile compiler. So Delphi compiler for um, Android, for uh, iOS, that's something that probably everybody here is waiting. And uh, actually from what I see that, that, that we have uh, the, the beta test for the mobile um, mobile Delphi uh, has just started. So if you're into it, just uh, contact Fabrizio in bit time or me directly, and uh, we can get you invited to the, the test because it's it's very close. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to go through any. Actually, maybe I just switch to the, the very last slide, like questions. <laughs> Uh, questions is a very good thing. So uh, just to summarize, um, uh, Delphi XE3 is the latest version uh, of, of Delphi. It's part of RAD Studio. Uh, so there is also Delphi C++ Builder, HTML5 Builder. Now we have Interbase as well uh, on the same uh, number. Uh, I have demonstrated using uh, Interbase uh, with uh, visual live bindings. Uh, yeah, so it's really exciting time. And it was my big pleasure today to be here and to demonstrate uh, Delphi XE 3 to you and uh, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm open for questions. It's possible to see um, uh, a demo application running on the Mac? Yes, of course. Oh, that's one of the key things. Okay, so uh, let me... Okay, that's... Uh, Maybe I just use something more visual. Um, yeah. Oh, that's my favorite demo. So um, this is uh, when you uh, are running uh, within um, Windows. So you have to have Windows to create Mac applications, but you can um, also add a new target like OS 10. So for the new application, you can just say add target, and here. Uh, I can edit profile, and and this is uh, oh where is my profile? Okay, it's coming. Uh, so this is uh, where you can specify a deployment options uh, for um, creating a Mac application because this is a logically a separate machine. So I'm running Windows inside of the uh, virtual machine, but my Mac has a different address, and I was actually prepared for this question, so I have already. Inside of my uh, Mac, I have already the something called Platform Assistant Server running. So this is a, a little tool that you uh, want to um, uh, start on Mac uh, because this it will help you with a remote debugging of your Mac application and also for starting uh, from inside of the IDE. You want to make sure that you know what is the IP address of your uh, remote Mac machine that you want to deploy. So go to the network and you can actually see, okay, this is my IP address uh, of my machine that was assigned by the uh, this uh, Wi-Fi network. Okay, I need to copy it. And now inside of the uh, Delphi ID, uh, I can actually see that this is actually the right one and I click on test connection uh, to see if I can connect to a remote uh, Mac machine. And from here I can actually go ahead and say, okay, just make it this active and click on run. And what will happen is uh, that this uh, application will be uh, compiled locally w with a Mac, uh, uh, with a Mac uh, compiler. Uh, and the resulting executable uh, will be sent over to this uh, remote machine. And in the bottom, in a moment, you will see there are errors. There will be a new errors in the compiler. There are some errors. Okay. Okay, I know what it is. I was playing with it. It's actually trying to do it to App Store. It should be to normal because I don't have a, a credential for App Store installed here. So uh, let me let me do it one more time. And hopefully this time is going to work uh, better. Um, okay, so you see the, on the bottom there is a new Delphi icon. icon started, and now I have a, a Mac version of my uh, of my uh, executable. And it's working. 
like charm. Okay, I don't see any questions, so uh, I'm very happy to be here and to kick off this conference, and I'm looking forward to all the sessions, and I, I hope that I can virtually replicate myself and be in three different <laughs> yes. places like uh, all the Delphi developers, yeah. and I do invite you for my 3D session as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pavel.